This all started way back in 1952 when uh, John Cobb was going for the water speed record on Loch Ness. And then I saw this fantastic jet boat crusader and I thought this is terrific because it's all about innovation and creativity. Getting the world land speed record took nine years of hard graft. The next stage was thrust SSC. We created the first ever supersonic car driven by Andy Green and it's never ever been bettered. Well, we decided that we're going to have a look at the water speed record. The current record has stood since 1978. Technology has moved on enormously. We're going to come up with something completely new. There's so much to do. It's absolutely brilliant. We're going to learn so much. We're going to, we're going to really develop something very special here. It's August 2022, and at a secret location in the southwest of England, Len Newton is running a 1 7 scale model of Thrust WSH. However, it's no mere toy. It's powered by a miniature jet engine and loaded with sensors to measure the forces it experiences at speeds of up to 90 miles per hour. The data gathered will be compared with computer simulations of the craft's expected performance. Modern technology will provide the design team with an unprecedented level of analysis. But over 100 years ago, engineers first recognised the value of using models to develop potential record breakers. Since the 1920s, many designers of land speed record cars have used wind tunnels to shape their vehicles, testing airflow and pressure using scale models. In 1993, the designers of Thrust SSC needed to test at supersonic speeds. So they filled a scale model with sensors and fired it down a track on a rocket sled at 850 miles per hour. Comparing the real-world data with computer simulations confirmed their design would work. When designing a boat, hydrodynamics, the way the craft interacts with the water, presents a very unique set of challenges. Models were used in the development of Crusader and designer Reed Railton was devastated when his friend John Cobb was killed during a record attempt in 1952. Railton went on to create a new design and a test model was built before the project was abandoned. 65 years later, the rediscovery of Railton's lost model would inspire Richard Noble to begin a research programme of his own. Many, many years later, um, there was a wonderful book produced called Railton, Man of Speed. In the book, we then discovered that he'd been terribly upset by the accident, of course, because Cobb was a close friend of his. And he spent 18 months designing uh, a new boat. In other words, this was going to be Crusader II. This was going to be the next one. Anyhow, I got the book and I was reading through this and I turned the page and there was the picture of this model. And this was his advanced model. The model had been built by National Physical Laboratory in 1954. I was able to track down the current owner and I was lucky enough to, to buy it, which is great. So we took the model and we scanned it. And um, from that, we started producing models. And that was amazing. We saw this thing zapping around at 50 miles an hour on a lake. And we got very excited about it, trying to learn what we could about um, uh, these, these very, very high performance boats and its engineering. We discovered there's simply no engineering. Um, there's no knowledge. So this then became incredibly attractive because if there's no knowledge, then uh, we can innovate. We can try and create the knowledge. And so this model was, uh, was the lead to the whole project. Testing suggested Railton's 1954 design for Crusader II could have achieved 300 miles per hour at a time when the record stood below 200. To challenge for the current record of 317 miles per hour, it was clear that an all-new design would be needed, with a target speed of at least 400 miles per hour. Speeds this high have never been attempted on water before, but powerboat designer Lorne Campbell was able to create a totally new design, aided by hydrodynamic data gained from Crusader 2 and aerodynamic lessons learned from the Thrust 2 land speed record car. A research program for Thrust WSH calls for two jet-powered scale models to be built and tested before construction of the full craft. The first model, C3.1, is almost six feet long, one-seventh the size of the final design. 
Following that will be C3.2, a 10-foot quarter-scale model that will use a gas turbine engine from a drone. Finally, the full-size craft will be built using data from the test program and computer simulations. It will be powered by a Rolls-Royce Spey jet engine from a Phantom jet fighter complete with afterburner. John Lofty Bennett was Crusader's engine specialist in 1952, and the photographs and plans discovered after his death inspired son-in-law Len Newton to build a working model of Crusader powered by a home-built jet engine. Len was the obvious choice to build and test research models for Crusader 2 and the new Challenger. 3.1 is a carbon fibre boat with the Mammoth engine in, designed for 50 pounds of thrust, designed by Lorne Campbell. He sent the drawings to a chap called George Robson in Germany and George finalised the drawings and uh, 3D printed um, a seventh scale model, probably 12 or 13 sections. I then assembled it, glued it all together, assembled it all, flatted and polished, filled and did whatever necessary to get the finish and then took my moulds from that. Two tanks, one on each side, which took up the two sides of the boat. Engine in the middle and at the front there's uh, the... GPS stroke login data terminal. That's all there. So they're pretty spread out in the boat, but the CAG is spot on. The planing shoes, you've got a planing surface sandwiched between the planing shoe and the upper housing is a strain gauge. And we use those to sense the load of each of the shoes. So we've got four, one on each shoe. And this gives us an idea when the boat is running as to the center of gravity as it centre of pressure rather as it moves forward and backward as the boat increases and decreases in speed. We got up to sort of 90 miles an hour with it. I take my lead from Lorne. If he says do it, I do it because he's the man who, who designed the boat after all. So he knows the concept and what should happen if this and, and, it, and he does understand about high speed craft but not really at this sort of speed. That's the problem. Issues with the model's data system have delayed the trials but by the late summer of 2022 the research programme is back on track. How will the model perform at higher speeds? Will the data match the simulations? Check back for updates. We'll let you know how it goes.